Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, der heutige Vortrag wird auf Englisch sein und so darf ich auch gleich damit anfangen. Uh, I would like to welcome you in the name of the ZV and also in the name of Maria Auböck. She is our uh, president in the Zentralvereinigung der Architekten and she cannot be here. She is very sorry about that, but she uh, herself has a, a, a podiums discussion. Uh, our guest today is one of the most interesting architects of our time. He is an excellent creative architect. He is a global player. He is Italian and his name is Mario Cucinella. It was my initiative to win him here for this lecture and I'm pleased and grateful that, the, that he accepted this invitation. His works are always about dialogue, relationship and atmosphere. His res respons responsibilities include projects uh, of different scales. Uh, big housing, urban planning, headquarters for large companies, hospitals, up to exhibition spaces. His artistic approach is based on his creative, empathic. The main themes are relationship between architecture and technology and also be between architecture and the rational use of energy and environment as a constant development of sustainability. Therefore, he founded uh, SOS. It's a school of sustainability in Bologna for postgraduate post school and before BGF it's uh, the Building Green Futures it's an uh, organization uh, an NGO a team of uh, around 100 interdisciplinary employees makes the highly professional implementation of his ideas possible The individual approach to the various tasks leads to different results, such as the greatest possible rationality of the basic structure in the hospital of San Raffaele or the imaginative resonance chambers of uh, a music school in Pieve di Cento. The sensitive different uh, design of two Vienna skyscrapers in Viertel 2 were among others uh, the reason for winning this competition uh, 2018. A few uh, information to his ar architectural biography. Uh, in 1987, he graduated uh, in Genova at Giancarlo di Carlo. From 1987 to 1992, he worked at Renzo Piano in Genova and uh, Paris as a project leader. In 1992, he founded MCA Mario Cucinella Architects in Paris in 1999 in Bologna. He taught at, very, at various universities like Ferrara, Torino, uh, Nottingham, uh, Naples and so on. His works are honored with numerous awards. 2016 and 17, the Royal Institute of British Architects and the American Institute of Architects awarded him a honorary fellowship. In 2018, he was commissary of the Italian contribution at the Venice Biennale. Caro Mario, grazie mille per essere qui con noi oggi. Uh, aspettiamo la presentazione. <laughs> ah. Well, thank you for this warm... Uh, welcome and welcome to everybody. 
Yeah, it's a little bit long story, but uh, I'm very happy to be here. Also, have a work in Vienna, so we'll be here for the next three or four years. So, so I will start my presentation with this picture because I was engaged on this idea that architectural and sustainability is a long story. It's not. A, it's not a recent story. It started from many, many centuries, and I think the young teenagers they now decide to go in the street to say I think something needs to be changed is a very powerful message I don't know maybe in Vienna too there was a student and in Bologna was a lot so it means there may be something moving you know, after many many years of talk you know. so but what sustainability mean well, sustainability is very difficult words to use because we use it too much you know, and and maybe the definition is a little bit difficult but just to show you something, you know, this, this is a timeline of from, I say, 1992, which is the Rio de Janeiro uh, first climate change conference for United Nations. So you can see in the last 20 years what happens every year. There was a conference about climate change, but also government start to apply new rules in make more efficiency in buildings, no? And uh, LEED certification, then Copenhagen, COP21 in Paris, and also there was uh, Francesco del Papa, no? the Pope, no? He's writing a beautiful book, very small, about the problem of environment in the world, but he, in one, in few pages, he talk about architecture. I talk about cities, talk about the, what's the problem of outside the city, the suburbia, and he talk about the building poverty. No, it's a building, is a poverty for food, is a economical poverty, but also building poverty. So I never, saw, never heard from any, uh, any government to talk about this. You know? And the reason is because people Many people in many areas of the world are suffering for the climate because building is bad. No, they are not able to deal in with different climates. No? So, but the road is very clear. No? And I always say is a is a one phrase from Hemingway that said is a, in the crossroad of life there's no signpost. No? So always need to make a choice. I don't think we have many choices in front of us. So. The program of 2020 about reducing CO2 emission, the 2030 and 2050 is a very looks like a long-term program. But the major point is, it's not about climate change. The climate change is going to happen in some way or another. The problem is how we can shift culture. We need many, many years to bring our culture, bring it to another one. You know? And this is the major problem, and that's why we need time. You know? i just give you some big numbers because I, I, they are interesting, but also is why it's important for architects to be involved in these things. No? So just to give an example, now we running the cost of concrete around the world is today almost 160 billion square meters. That is what happened today, at today. So in the next 16 years, no, seven years, so we expect to grow for 20 billion square meters, which is one half of this is in China. So one billion square meter in China every year. On 2060 is about two times what we built out today. So that is the picture. That's why it's important to talk about buildings, you know, because buildings consuming almost half of the energy and producing more, almost half the CO2 emission. So I think architects are really very important uh, people if we want to reach this goal. Now, how we can make better buildings and how we can work with the existing buildings, especially in Europe. But the, the, the most interesting contradiction, because sustainability is a little bit a paradox, you know, because we talk about uh, uh, eco buildings, but make buildings is not an ecological action. No, it's not ecological because you need to using concrete, transport material, using glass, 
whatever you do, eco is always a transformation of fundamental materials. Maybe it's eco the way it's run for the next 30, 40, 60 years. You know? But what happened, which uh, I'm most interested to see what's happening in the future, is this. So the population grow and the square meter we need to build is more and more and more. But the next step from EU, EU regulation is to make it or nearly zero energy buildings. So this is a gap. No? In one way we need to build a lot, and the other way we want to make building less and less expensive in terms of energy. This gap, which is that, I think is the major cultural problem. No? Because it's not, it's not a technological problem. That's what I'm trying to explain. No? It's we, we, technology is not enough for solving this problem because we, we know already what technologies mean in terms of environment and the impact of technology in buildings. So maybe we need to find another way. So, and uh, this is uh, from before the Industrial Revolution, so zero fossil fuel was of the energy we, we talk today is very recent in humanity. Now it's only 250 years, maybe 200. But we did building for centuries with no energy. That was and no energy, but very empathic with the environment. So the, the energy was outside the buildings and we're using to make better buildings. The Industrial Revolution was an amazing story for humanity. Of course, we grow and everything uh, happens. Very, we, maybe our life is better than before. But then now we come back. So what we say in the next 50 years, we want to make, again, building with zero energy. So maybe we need to build a bridge, a knowledge bridge with our past. Not for nostalgic, but I don't think we need to rebuild building as done 300 years ago, but maybe the way they're thinking, they th how they make building with climate. What, what is the relationship between the building and the climate to make better building, and especially to make zero energy building? Because, I mean, the regulation is quite clear. Ne nearly zero energy is mean you can design any kind of buildings, and the energy you need to use is a renewable energy. So you need to make a very high performance buildings if you want to use less energy from renewable energy. So, so maybe this step is we, we did a very good relation with climate for many centuries, then maybe in the last 200 we have some problems, and now we need to rebuild this relationship. You know, that's I think is the goal. Also is the goal of a city, that's why European city program is so important because we want to live in the better city you know, with less traffic, less pollution and make our city better. You know? So that's what I'm saying. We did for many centuries. Maybe, maybe, maybe the solution is looking in our back and rebuild that bridge. You know? So and I want to make a sh very short story about, about the Old buildings. No? I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm not nostalgic. I'm not looking something like uh, the past was beautiful and the present is terrible. I don't want to say that. I, wa I want to say maybe I need to look a little bit on the back to see how people are dealing with this. No? And we do now research about different climates and we're looking for some examples. I just started a few, few ones. This is in India, in Aminabad, is Gujarat. So very hot climate, and the, they make building underground. So they're building a sort of a st called step well. So the steps is a public space, is a piazza, is a square. And every 10 meter you grow down is the less temperature. Until you arrive in the end, they're collecting water, and that is the end of the story. And many buildings in Gujarat, in, in India, in a very hot and dry climate, they are built like this because there's no other way to cool your summer. You need to go there. And so Maraja make these buildings deeply and they're living in this darkness, it's too much light and cooler, no? and collecting water. One story about this for architects is very dangerous. I always say architects are a very dangerous person, no? very dangerous, can make a lot of beautiful things, but also terrible. No? 
And in these buildings, when you arrive, it is it's flat. Outside, you don't see anything. You know? The only see is the six big stones. You know? And actually, there are the tomb of six architects. You know? Because they make a so beautiful building, the Maharaja say, you're not going to build another one. So this is the last one you made. So this is also a dangerous, a dangerous work. You know? oh, sorry. And this is another beautiful story. It's about Marco Polo. Marco Polo crossing Persia from uh, Venice. And he went in uh, Persia, which is between the is Iran today. And he's arrived in this village, and people, to say hello, they offer him an ice cream. So how people in Persia were able to make an ice cream in, in 13th century? So it's a big question, you know? And they build this building, you see in a section. It's a big wall looking south, and the small wall, this, this is the angle of the sun, which is mean that area, sorry, which one, this one? This, er this is the angle. Huh? So during the day, in the winter, this area is always in shadow. Huh? Then they put water in the evening, and then, because the sky is minus 55 degrees, for the effect of the sky, the radiation from the sky, this water, few, maybe one centimeter, was frozen in the night. They put the ice in a tank, and this dome, uh, during the summer, which is 55 degrees outside, creating with natural ventilation, they take away the heat, and the Persian people get an ice cream in the in the summertime, you know, by using a building. Maybe they take 300 years to understand this relationship, you know, because that's that's a difficult, you no? Know, because you don't have a computer, so you don't know anything about it. But you make it, this building. This is the ice cream, which is still do it with the fridge, but the tradition is still there, you no. Know? And this is what remain about the domes. Of course, Iran, Iraq, the fighting and the war can destroy many of these examples. But the, the empathy with the environment was so strong. Then they find, maybe they take time to find the solution, but when they find it, they get an ice cream. So I find that's quite amazing. No? It's or this is in Pakistan. Is the city with this uh, catch wind catcher? So they catch the wind in the in the night. The building are in in mud. So they get this cold wind in the night. They are closing that in the day, and they are keeping eight ten degrees difference during the day from outside temperature only by ventilation. So I say, ah, oh, that's interesting, now How they dealing with this? Sorry. Oh, that's beautiful. And this is the China. You know? This is the cave houses. You know? They use excavating and and the master plan is this one. It's so fantastic. You know? These old houses. And always, you see in this picture, this is the entrance. You know? It's always on side to avoid ghosts getting inside of the house. But also in Tunisia, you know, in the Mediterranean, they do that. And maybe you remember that picture. This picture is from Star Wars, you know, in the Skywalker. No? And the picture is mean, and they look, uh, the George Lucas see the future, you know, it's Star Wars, the planet, but they're living in an old house. <laughs> I think that is interesting, this connection. And this is the Cameroon, they make this dome, which is a little detail, you no? Know? About this, they make this shape, they're creating shadow on this element, avoiding to overeating the, the terracotta. No? And then the mass make it expanding the temperature during the night. No? So that's the picture. So I don't want to tell you that we need to do that again. Of course, we don't want to leave that, of course. But I'm interested about this texture. No? Maybe we need to think about, if you want to make a very high performance, maybe I can use some detail of thinking about, the, make some detail, make shade on the elements, maybe it make much better performance. So today is about the zero energy buildings in the, 
as you said, creative empathy was... I, I tried to find another world to make uh, sustainability because sustainability is too vague. You know? I say creative empathy. It means empathy is uh, attitude. You need to understand the people. No? You say, I'm empathic with somebody else because I try to feeling about your feeling. No? It's sometimes in using this for doctors. No? The doctor try to be empathic with his sickness, you know, people. But empathy is the way you relate it to climate, to the place. And creative is the tool to transform this information in the buildings. Because creativity as a creativity is like a crazy horse. You, know, you can do everything, you know, of course, beautiful. But empathy is make your creativity maybe more control. You know. This is a little diagram about uh, the ambition, no? because I say in the beginning, I'm not, I'm working in the real world, so I'm, I know there's a contradiction, no? because we cannot make all zero buildings everywhere, we cannot make everything we want, because we're dealing with the client market. But this is just to show this is the line of sustainability, and then everybody, student, education, developer, global economy, everybody wants to do that. Ambition are very high. But the reality, mm, we're still a little bit far away. You know? But this point, uh, the point when these ambitions are together, maybe the developer and the architects and maybe the client, they all want to push in on sustainability. Maybe this gray area of intensity, of ambition, maybe give us the chance to do something. You know? That's the area where we try to work. You know? So just give some uh, some examples, and I show you the project. No? We're combining this idea of a natural ventilation as a principle in building. This is a building we finish. As I tell you later, is a story of uh, Italian story. A building is crazy. Is um, mm. is the headquarters for the agency for uh, environmental protection. No? This is the skyscraper we do in Milan about one of the principles of the solar radiation. This building we did in China is about how we can shade the buildings and improving the performance, reducing the demand of heating. This is done in, in Ghana with the principle of shading. You know, some area is sometimes is basic principle help you a lot to make your building working better. This is in Algeria. We do now a project for the government, for um, a government office. You know. So we try to combine high quality of architecture, is one of the mission, and the, the complicity with the climate. You know. And maybe what we call green building is, is like a, a, a new car. You know. Today we cannot make car all electrical, because the system is not ready, but we make it hybrid, like half and half. So this is the first step you know, to move into another era. No? So we did show you that we have project somewhere in the last years. We did project mainly a lot of in Italy. Uh, we are Italian based, but we do a lot of work in Italy and we have work in some other area. So we do some tower, uh, we just find in in Vienna, uh, we're still fighting with the developer. It says, uh, you know, I something I discover here. This is a good client. But developers are the same everywhere in the world. They have all the same attitude. Whatever you talk with the Chinese, with the Austrian, with Americans, with Italian, they came from all the same school, which is mean is the difficult people. <laughs> So we started with a little sketch, uh, maybe I don't know if you know, it was a competition, and it was designed two towers close to the hippodrome, and we decided to design two different towers, not, not, not a twin towers, because one is a residential, another one is a offices or an hotel. So this is the plan. We collaborate with Zekner and Zekner, which is here, and we have a good collaboration. So, I don't know if you hear, this is the station of stadium. Uh, this is the area which be renovating the existing buildings, and this was a new residential, and the tower just in the end here is the stadium. Uh, and this is the 
be powder mill. So the idea is to make two elements very different. One is uh, horizontal layers, which is the residence, the garden, and the other one is very vertical elements, and white is the the office. But one thing we did, the office have a little department of uh, uh, research and development, so we do as architects and not engineer, because then we work with engineer, but this is another story, you know, but we starting to do analysis ourselves. So this was the first, uh, this was the program of the client. Sorry, oops, I'm sorry. Then we say something about the relation with this boulevard and the greenery which is on site, and also the story of the water on the, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a water pool here for cooling, and the idea is this terrace is bring the green from the park on top of the buildings. But then we do some uh, our um, preliminary uh, climate analysis also. In this case, is the wind, is a wind come from the north in the same direction of the river. It's very cold. So how we can dealing with these shapes and also how we can optimize the solar radiation in the buildings. And this is a, the projection of the shading on April to see what happened during the day and in the springtime to see also what kind of what happened in this public space. So shading analysis is quite important because you can see all year how the shading is moving around. And this was a, a very quick CFD analysis to see the wind, the impact on the building, the velocity between the two buildings. You see that here, we have a problem here, here. And how we can dealing with the public space under this, this uh, canopy. So all these things in the beginning, of course, there's not like an aerodynamic engineer, but in the beginning, also a very sketchy, it give you immediately the ideas. So this is the massive plan, and that is the, so this is the two towers, see from the stadium towards the city, this is the residential, this is the hotel, and this is the canopy, and these all the residential things. We little bit change the project. Is that the program? So it's, uh, it's an evolution in the last one year's work because this is our ambition and that's we want the competition with this project. Yeah. It looks for different highs of apartment with a glass house because we thought it was good because wind comes in this direction, maybe in the corner you have two floors with a winter garden. And then in the summer you maybe open that windows and get a little garden. So something of that is still there. And also looking what is the impact of the solar radiation and the shading, how much kilowatt are on the facade. And one of the things we try to prove uh, all the time in building is how much we can improve natural ventilation inside the building because also here is a period of time you can open the window, we don't need air conditioning. Maybe it's a short, but still a period of time you can build and go with no mechanical service. No? And that's the, some analysis we did in this kind of a glass house, you know, how we can make this triple space in the office and how we can work in double size for a little winter garden. So results is uh, in progress. Huh? It's still the competition and that is, you see there. Yes. Now the building is a little bit more dense but I'm still optimistic. That's still in progress. And this is the top of the office building is a sky bar, so you can have a view of, of Vienna from there. And this is now the space between the two buildings covered by the roof. It's an open roof and this is the entrance for the residential buildings. Yeah, 
and that's the view from the terrace. So now we are under construction of these buildings in Milan. We are in the heart of Milan. Milan facing a very, very big change in the last 15 years. Because the city center was uh, was an empty space in the very close to the central station and connecting with the old part of the city, and they start to build few skyscrapers. This is the last one, so it's this one, this one, and uh, is a podium. All this is a podium, so it's a higher, and this is the one of the major road, and we build this square and this building which is for an insurance company and also we did this small building for the developer of the area so as always is uh, try to find solutions you know and i think this is one of the major problem of this work and then it, I mean, for us at least is not find a solution in the first time so we need to do many many Example. So we, this is a part of the study we did. So they already built this area. This is a Unicredit Bank. This is a commercial space, and this is a huge park. They just opened, and the podium is a all public space. You know? So the tower is the last piece of this development, but also is the only tower which touch the city level. So. This from the podium and is a is not a wood structure. It's a metal structure with cladding in wood. This is the entrance from the podium. And you go up and that is a sort of a glass house in the top. And this is at the other building. So it's under construction. But there was a strategy in the beginning, and the idea was because the south face. This is a plenty south face of the building is always the most difficult because especially in our latitude it's not a summertime a problem because sun is high it's the winter time when the sun is low clear day inside of the building is a glass house effect you need to switch out air conditioning and cooling the building so what we did we creating an empty space is an atrium is 19 20 floors high and we're using this space in the summer to keep the eating, so it's all closed and all the eating from the building is keep inside and reused by the floors. And the summertime from the bottom part of the building we action the ventilation and we pull up all the cooling to all the eating, avoiding that it will be too hot inside of this atrium and the office they facing this is one of the strategies. And the last is the top is, um, is a, a sort of an event room on the top of the buildings. And we work in, in beam technology with all this quite complicated system of uh, putting together all this information. So that is another point of this work in the last few years is the changing the system of work and this is only in 3D design and putting all together. I'm sure you do it too. But we're coordinating all the works from structural engineer, mechanical engineer, and architecture. We're putting all together, so we manage this ourselves. Which is, in, and this is one of the. This is the diagram of mechanical system overlapping the architecture and the structure. So th this is one of the. This is a complex building, but also. For us, we came from AutoCAD, no? and the last three years we're moving all the office working in Revit, so make all these courses and things. And this is the difference between me, the analogic architects, and my young architects are digital. No? This is the diagram in Grasshopper about the facade. No? So I cannot see a facade in this drawing, for me is I don't know what it is, but they do that. So the distance I'm starting as an architect in 1992 and using a I don't know what you call it in English is just a yes like sheet and a pen. That was all I need to know to make my work. Now the entrance for starting work is this thing. So you see what's happened in the last 20 years in terms of tools of works. 
Oh, so that is, and that's something. But also we do that. This is my side of analogic work. You know, we do modeling, we do real models, no? And there's a lot of work in modeling in the office because also if you work in 3D, which is good because you go quick and you have many opportunities, when you do models, especially for the young architects, if you, it's also a process of learning how to do it. Not No materials, but you build the space and you can start to thinking about how these things is evolved. No? So we do both. No? This is one of the entrance, and uh, and this is the empty space in the middle of on the south side of the buildings, where all the office face, and uh, and this is the the big atrium. And but the picture is is this one. So we did that atrium not because it's nice, which is of course is nice to make an atrium on twenty floors, but this atrium have a reason. No, we do it because it is an environmental strategy. So that's the top of the buildings. And this is the top, is the glass house, it's no mechanical s system, it's only running free because we cannot do it that on This space is too big to make cooling or eating. No? And that's of course is the meeting room by the CAO. You know, they have 48 people around the table. She's making a huge, huge room. That's it. But the the scheme of the building is one skin outside is only one glass, and for each floor is a double glazing. So it's a double facade, which is creating a sort of a buffer zone. And the facade, the one glass, when they arrive on the ground, is like a skirt, is flyovers, open and cover almost all the piazza. And this is the only public space in the level of the cities, you know, because the other buildings are on the podium. So it will be a very important new piazza in, the, in Milan. So we do now on site also, this is in Albania, is <coughs> it the main axe of Tirana. There's a park. This is, was a monument for the for the president, which is now built in 1960, and this is the building. This is, I'm sorry, I don't know why it's going on, but it's okay. And that's the building. The shape of the buildings uh, is, we, of course, we, we did that, but it's come out by the urban regulation. Huh? So there are two buildings on the two sides, you need to make 60 degrees angles and you need to cut your building. So the shape of this twisty is because we need to follow that regulation, that's the plan. Oh, there's two buildings there. Oh, make these two angles. No? This section is all residential here and this is offices and uh, commercial. And that's the building. So all the models you see, they are all made in the office. So it's something we do. We have a model maker workshop, so we're producing everything. Yeah, some detail about this entrance. So it's a space now, one minus one floor is uh, like a gym, a uh, commercial space. And also we Combining some solution, of course, also for the Tirana regulation, how to collect in rainwaters, how you make a more natural ventilation on building, crossing facade. So all all buildings, all apartments are two facing two side, and also we creating this garden on the top. Yeah, this is this landscape architect is a German, it's land Andreas Kipper. And so the terrace will be changed the season. No? So that is in October, February, April, and June. And that is the ground floor. So now we're working with some company to make one piece in concrete, in the white concrete, which is this printing, and then try to make more simple we can. And this is the story about the show in the beginning. This ARPA is the Agency for the Protection of the Environment. It's a, 
is a one floor, it's only ground floor, is a hundred and twenty chimney as a roof. So that's the Italian story. I, I won that competition in, in 2006 and the plan was building the building in eight months. Eight months. And the old boot construction prefabricating. Yeah? I'm just finished in December. So it take me almost 11 years. No? Italian bureaucracy is very complicated and the market is collapsing now. So contractor is collapse one after the other, so we changed two contractors to do that. The point, if you want to be an architect in Italy and working in Italy, if you do one building every 11 years, so you maybe make three buildings your life, if you're lucky. So that's the point, you know, it's a little bit harder to... And the building is finished and already need a new... 10 years after, you know, you need to make the, the first hard maintenance, you know. So we just opening and start a new maintenance. So, but all this chimney is in wood construction, was built, actually the building was built very quick. Then it was an earthquake, so we need to change all the structures and make a new reinforcing everywhere. Then the contractors fail, so it's a long story. There's a little garden between this chimney and the chimneys working as strategies, of course, they're not enough. You cannot run in that building free. First, because regulation, they're not allowed you to make a free running building in a public. You cannot do it. So, but you can balance that. What I'm saying is the relation between form and performance of the buildings. Then you need to have some technology, of course. But the chimney, you know, they're working like this, you know, in the Summertime, we open the vent on the back, no? and the heating will be go up on, the, on this area, and then, like a chimney, it just suck air and take air from the garden, so from outside. Okay, in a period of time, because in uh, Ferrara, which is the north of Bologna, is the worst climate you can find it. So in the winter, it's humid and cold. And the summer is hot and humid, so you don't want to open the windows because you bring heating and so you can do that only in the middle season, but only in the middle season, which means four months of twelve. So we can do that strategies and the, and the winter time is the same with collecting sun as a glass house effect and mix this eating here to help to reduce the demand of eating from the floor. So this is a hybrid system, you know, it's working a little bit with the natural resource and with technology. And that's the chimney, it is all empty all around and all on the side there are photovoltaics on top. This is the inside. And also we do this kind of a daylighting analysis, you know, we, this is a model in the Turin, in the Polytechnico. This is a, um, what do you call that in English? It's an um, artificial sky. No? This is only a six of a, of a sky. Six part of the sky is a triangle. The light is different density because sky have a different intensity. You can put your model inside and by sensor you can see the, the quality and the intensity of light in June, December, you know, you can analyze all the days in all the, the season and to see what happens in some moment, you know, maybe there's some light come through, the moment some light can maybe make you problems in your desk or you need more artificial light. So this is an analogic way to do it, but you can really learn by doing, because you're doing, you test, and also if you change the color of this facade, just change the different kind of white, you can see the diagram of intensity of light, it changed completely. So it means a little detail, like choose the right colors on the wall, make a difference in terms of quantity of light. So that's the building's finish. So this is all the photovoltaics around and the building is under there. Now we all you know, finished, but we have another year of work for a very interesting museum in Milan. Okay. 
and you stop me when, I'm, when they need to stop. And it's a museum by the private collection, and this private uh, collection is about Etrurian vase. So, very particularly part is the fifth century before Christ. The Etrurian is a long story. It's a civilization of 10th century in Italy, uh, from Etrurian, which is uh, Lazio and Tuscany. But uh, at that time, in the fifth year before Christ, they start to make a terracotta, but the terracotta is black because they burning this terracotta in the oven, we know oxygen. So the, all the material is stick on the terracotta and they take out with the wax, they make this vase black, and shiny, beautiful, but very difficult to expose in a, in a museum because black vase with light is almost impossible. So, and I did this little sketch because the story of the arts from Etrurian, a lot of art was made to, to the dead people because they believe it's another life. So it's the beginning of some religions thing. So you not die, you only go to another life. And to bring these people to this trip, they make objects to help them to this trouble. So it's a beautiful story and it's an amazing art. So what I'm saying is all the tension for this vase is only by a breath. Is the last breath you made is start your trip. So and everything is about this moment when your life is finished and you start another one. And all the intensity of ours is in this moment. So we do that in an existing building. This exists. Uh, only exists this part. Uh, and is from a very bourgeois family in the beginning of the century. So we keep this uh, uh, 1970 uh, design by a very uh, famous architect in Milan who's designed the, this sort of French imperial style for the bourgeoisie Milanese. No? We keep this as a memory of the layers of the buildings and we excavate in this under the garden but also we excavate in another floor so here. And this all the mechanical service and this is a secret room from the collectors. So they're putting all the, the vase, all the objects. And this is the public museum. And the museum is also in this area. This is a, like an event area and the top is a restaurant. But the reference for to make this underground building is this, this is Cerveteris in the Lazio, is the tomb. The, the only thing that remain from Etrurian architecture is the tomb and the artist dome is a beautiful and inside they're all fresco painting no? so it's absolutely something to visit so the building is the project is uh, this is the existing building no? so we designed these three domes no? also in memory of a fa famous Italian architect Franco Albini which make a little museum in Genoa Il Tesoro di San Lorenzo it's very small, very beautiful. And this is uh, something that uh, you're never going to show. This is uh, the three uh, domes, and there's another one under the buildings. And all these domes are made in stones, in bricks of stones, from uh, the mountain, is a, what's it called, is a limestone. It's a great, come from uh, behind Bologna, is a quarries, you know? So that's what's going to happen inside. This is a model, it's a little bit draft. And you can go discover inside of this underground, these domes and this, all these elements. But the point is the little details. You know? It's always about details. You know? This is the dome. Hmm? The stones, there are one after the others, and there's a gap between the stone. It's about four millimeters. So what happens, all the air comes from the floor and go out from the stones. So like the domes is breathe, uh, is take in and out the air, so there'll be no grills, there'll be nothing, it is only pure space of stones. So there's the structures, some of the space and uh, so we do a prototype in scale one to one. 
just to see the dome first, to see the light. This is the structures to keep the stones, because the stones are not one touching others, they're all suspended. No? That's the system, they take air from the floors and then the out is take from from that gap. No? And this is the last prototype. So the idea is then the floor is a very simple, is a concrete painting in a very dark red. No? And the, all the vases are suspended in a very thin metal stick. So and the glass of containing the vase are very hard, you know, like triangles, so it's uh, against the softness of the of the dome. So and they are all suspended. So so the idea is the vase is uh, suspended between two life, you know, the life on the hurt and the life on some other place that we don't know still, we don't know what happens. But I, I like the idea they're not on some table, but they are just floating. So we'll be finished that in uh, one year, so October next year. So we say project for 99% of the population, because if you remember a few years ago, somebody say architects or architecture is only regarding 1% of the population. 99% is done by others, developers, construction, other people. So I'm finished, almost finished. Uh, this House for Peace is about this woman, Betty Williams, his Nobel Prize for Peace in 1976. She was a, a she is an amazing woman, and then she's get the Nobel Prize because she tried to put together the two in, in Northern Ireland, when there was a fighting between Catholics and Protestants, you know, she take the families of of people who lost their son in the war because they said that the 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 pain when you lose your son is the same whether you are Catholics or not. So she make this uh, association, which is take care about peoples for many years, and now she creating this. Uh, this uh, foundation called uh, the City of Peace for refugees come from um, Afghanistan, Iraq, Africa, with the refugees with with children, because that's one of the major. I, I'm sure you know the debate in Italy and Europe about what the, what about refugees, because there are a lot of families came and they they don't know what happened because they, they, you know the, our government is coming crazy about this story. It is no place to welcoming people, especially people come from political escape. They, they're not only to find jobs, but they go away because it's a war. So we find two donors to make for the kids' house, and we design a house in the land. The story is beautiful. This is in the south of Italy, Basilicata, which is on the south facing the Ionio Sea, and uh, in this area, I mean, the south of Italy, especially Puglia, Basilicata, Calabria, they already pay a lot in terms of environment. They make Taranto, you know, is a big industry for steel, which is creating an amazing pollution. It's a high level of cancer for kids. I mean, uh, brain disease is a power station, they're burning coal which is of consequences for healthy, dramatic. So, and the government of Berlusconi, 15 years ago, want to put in that side the nuclear score. So people come crazy because they say, well, we, enough, we did enough. So they went to Rome, a woman from that village, you know, black woman, small, they went to Rome to protest, you know, and Betty, uh, saw the program in Sky, in Sky News, and she went to Rome to help these ladies, you know, to fighting against the decision to make a uh, nuclear waste in this land. You know. So after 10 years, they won that things, and this land was given to her to make this village. So that's the story. And so that's the idea of this house. So we built now the, new, the first house, which is very simple. We only have 350,000 euros to do everything. 
The idea is uh, for like a flowers, you know, is the shading. See, we are in the south, very hot, and uh, we and also a lot of light. So these four elements as shading in wood, and then there's the three three apartments. We working with locals to make, try to find the way they made these things. They were using hemp for many many years, especially before. The Second War in Italy was a lot of plantation of hemp, canapa. Because if you know Venice, where they do the Biennale, the Corderie, you know, in Arsenale, it's a long buildings. That's the place where they make cord with canapa, with hemp for boats. So with, it was a huge production there. So this is Vimini, there's a tradition of using this material, and also with this they made a beautiful uh, coat. So we did this in a wood construction and using hemp for the finishes, and uh, using very simple technique, how we collect the waters. Also, I mean, we want to design something for refugees, which is good, not only cheap because of refugees, we want to do the best we can do, no? So this is three apartments with a little garden, and this, uh, that's the picture. So we almost finished, we just built the roof. Take uh, two years to get a planning permission, because the mayor, eh, the major, we did the project, the mayor, the mayor before was from uh, a socialist. Then they make election and come a guy from Alega, you know, from the right which is won the campaign against the refugees. Then we present the planning permission, so... Okay, that's... That's a complicated thing, you know. It's always difficult. And we have a... We're creating a sort of what we call a workshop, Ricostruzione, is a group of young architects who work with us. And we're working for the... in area of the earthquake. So there was L'Aquila, Emilia and... Central Italy, and we did a few small projects, because we like to do a big project, of course, it's good, but also with a very tiny project. This is a program of few schools. This is the first school we did, is a kindergarten in Modena, uh, and it was a nice story, start from this picture. And uh, the story is interesting, this is uh, by Pinocchio with the wave, blah, blah, blah. No? But when I did this project, it was a competition, of course, uh, it came into my mind my kindergarten. You know, it's not easy, I'm sure, if not, you know, you remember your kindergarten. It's four years old, five, it's, yeah, I don't have many memories, but I remember my kindergarten. I was in Piacenza, which is a city in the Emilia, close to Milan, and I discovered 15 years later who designed that buildings? You know? And I still remember there was two small class. My family living in a very popular area, you know? and uh, there was two class, only maybe 30 kids. It was a circle uh, with the walls that size. The walls define a garden. I'm sorry, I don't have a. I forgot to put the picture. It's a little garden, and there are two glass facing south. It was a terrible sun. I still remember the sun on this glass, and especially, I don't know what I say in English, but maybe some of you remember, I asked you to make us a nap, you know, sitting on the chair like this. There was two hours of nap. It was a nightmare, so I still remember that. Then discovered 50 years later was a Giovanni, Giuseppe Vaccaro was one of the architects. Then later we became one of a superstar because he made a beautiful rational, rationalist buildings in Naples, in Rome, and also in Bologna. So that's make me interesting because I'm saying, well, they say the responsibility design schools. Okay, responsibility design everything, but schools, you know, they don't move but they travel in your memory for a long, long time, maybe for all your life, because you're going to remember if it was good or not. So I, mean, the, the, I thought to start this project by this picture about Pinocchio, because I thought the Pinocchio story is a dramatic. I don't know if you remember Pinocchio. I think it's the worst to tell to a kid. No? It's a puppet in wood with burn his legs. It's, 
and the cat and the others, they try to kidnap it, and then his father's face. So it's a very dramatic story, no? But this is interesting because if you read the page of Claudia about this, it's Pinocchio and Geppetto was lost on the well for two years. I mean, it's, to be honest, it's something, it's a nightmare. Then Pinocchio saw after two years that there's a little light in the end of these things and he find his father. It's, it's a half page with beautiful writings, very emotional. But also it's a metaphor of the womb, the womb of, a, of, of a mama, no? because it's protecting them. And so I designed this. So this is uh, our whale. And it's safe, because school, there are two things you cannot miss. Safe in earthquake, after what happens. And safe, especially for kindergarten, about material, because kids, when they are three years old, they don't touch things, they leak. They leak everything. So you need to be careful what they leak, you know. So all things need to be perfect. So we did that, is, uh, some sketches about this. And it was also in the Pianura, in the plain of Modena. You know, the, uh, this is a plain, it's a huge plain. There's only few vertical elements. One is the trees, you know, cultivations, or pioppi, I don't know if you say in English. And also the, uh, the towers of church. There's only two, and the rest is all very horizontal. So for me, that was why we make this school as very repetitive because if something is in your eyes when you go around, you re always see these lines. No? And of course, one floor building is easy, but it's a pedagogic building because you know we collect the water for the toilet. The toilet water is not from the tap. You know, in Italy, I'm sure here, the water is on the toilet is the same you're drinking on, the, which is a waste. So. Explain it to the kids that the water coming from the rain and we're producing energy with the solar panel and photovoltaics and blah, 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 all, all wood and there's no energy consumption, blah, blah, blah. So we did that and it was the first time we using this program that we designed every single element and we sent directly for the company who cut all the pieces of the machine. So we shortened the progress. That's this models and the school. And I think if you do schools, uh, for me, is one of the best uh, experience when you do that, because you do that for kids and families, and then when you open the school, the people come so exciting, you know, and there's a new school, especially in this day, that was a, a very dramatic situation. And of course, there was a big story about this, you know. This is a wall or is a floor? For you know, it may take three months to convince the authority for the opening of the school. Then it's not a floor; it's not a wall, because if not, they're going to put you there you know, a balustrade. Because kids maybe they fail or you know for security. Take three months, eight months to be, three months for the authorities to understand that. Of course, what's happened? Open the doors, kids. What they do is they play with this. No, of course, and all safe. Nobody died, so everything is okay. No problem. They know what to do. Yeah. So that is the school at night. And the design the garden now is much better than this. Is a. Uh, Working with a um, architect, landscape architect, is a woman. She make this garden. Is uh, because kids at three years they don't know about time. For them, time is something they need to discover. So nature can be helped to see the time. So it's a little bushes where the uh, where the farfalle, what do you say, farfalle, butterflies coming out in March. No? And there's another place where the flowers come in April. So, And this garden is a pedagogic garden to explain what's going to happen. And we did this project with was a very tiny buildings. Huh? Because we, the Italian Industry Association, they, f they collect the money from all people from every union. So there was people from... And we collecting one hour of work, every people 
give that money to the to the association and we raise seven millions of euro for all Italy. And with this money we build this five project. This one is the first is a house of music. So next to the building is a high school with a music direction. I don't know what you call that when you can do a high school with a with a play music. Then no class for music. So how are you gonna do it? You know? So we build that. Every cylinder is a is a tool. So it's one is a violin, one is a piano, one is a guitar. You know? And we did this because in the plane, you saw the way they cut the the blade, the um, the wheat. You no, know? many years ago it was a rectangular. Now it's a circle. You no, know? so we thought it was something like this. And uh, and the roof had the chips in metal to shading the this wood construction. And that's the room of drums. This is the room where they make the play all together. That was the opening with the President of the Republic. That was amazing. I was the only one not talking. The, all the politicians and people talking. I was, I was invited, which is already something, but not talking. <laughs> they all know everything better than you. They say it's, it's, uh, the magic of politics. And there was many. We never saw <laughs> them coming for the opening. That's funny. So that's the president, the student, and that's in the night. And what's happened? This is an area. The plain is uh, full of little village you know, with a lot of houses. It's a f all the plain is from Turin to Venice is built, but it's built with a lot of terrible buildings. You know, it's like called Villa Topoli. It's a lot of small villa, little condominium. So we did the buildings and then the city all said, okay, maybe we can give you the grass and we make a, a bicycle truck, okay. Then the company of electricity, they said, well, okay, we demolished something, close was terrible and we give you the trees. Then the next door, the, the people who was living next door said, oh, the building is terrible, maybe we paint it and they paint it. So in a one year, they changed it completely because everybody, try to make them building better. So the, sometimes it's contagious if you do nice things. You know. And this is a youth community center. It's a very small building in a garden, public garden abandoned. We make these little things. In one side is a library and the other side is a sort of a co-working for the... And the, this building is about 600,000 euros. So it's maybe less, 400 or 500, it's very, very cheap, but open the roof on south, shading the buildings, and make this. And for the local community, you see the buildings behind, eh? for the local community, these young fellow, they don't know what to do because they go to school, there's no space for them, there's nothing happens. So these little things change completely because they have a place to go, to play, to do something else. And we did this. That's what I told you, this kind of a system is in, in agriculture, it's everywhere. So we make this, is a, one is a sort of a auditorium to make many things. They make dance, they make a conference, they community, they all stay together. And the small one is a social kitchen. So it's a big kitchen and everybody can use to make a, something to families and everything in a very small building. And that's, we did this dance of school because we discovered this uh, tiny village. They only have one football match, uh, football pitch for the boys. But the girls, they don't play football. So what are they gonna do? So we asked into the community, there was a lot of meetings and things. So, well, there's no place for girls to make something. And we make this little room for dancing and we opened with this. Uh, it was all these little girls dancing. It was very beautiful. It was simple, but solving some problems. So I think I, that's why I mean, like this kind of works because I feel very useful. I do something that is good for them, for the community, and they're all happy and they, it's good and cheap. And this one we just finished now is a house for people with multi handicap. So mean people cannot, they're not auto, I say, 
they need help all days. No? So what's happened? This is the most expensive, spent 1.5 million. So in the area, which is close to Bologna, Pieve di Cento, there was the local assistance, the public assistance, they only can assist two people a day, two. And the family have a huge problem because as you know, you cannot bring these people in the hospital. They don't do this service anymore. No. Maybe some private association, but it's very expensive. There's no more public service. So we did that with a, a, a local association and the, and the um, government uh, office. And we did that. Is 20 people resident plus 20 people every day from morning to the evening. No? I tell you, when we present the project to the family, people cannot believe because you make something that really, really needs for people. How to deal with these problems. No? So, this is the house and the uh, space. The car, we're working with a painting which is, because people with this, uh, like Alzheimer's or other things, they need a lot of help. They really need to find the code of colors and shape because they need to feel to be at home. You know? And this is a little bit more complicated, but I'm almost finished. Yeah? And uh, <coughs> we did this project for this city. This is Camerino. It's one of the oldest universities in Italy. And this is the place. You know? It's a walled city. Then the earthquake three years ago uh, is a university city. So there are 7,000... It's a, it's a 9,000 people living there. 7,000 are students. So just to give you the scale of the relationship and all living in the city center because everybody rent rooms. No? So earthquake, everything was shut down. So all the city centers closed. So nobody can get inside, which is creating a lot of problems, not only because you cannot go back home, because because you cannot live in your day-by-day -day life, you know? You're walking in the street, get an ice cream, read a newspaper, talk with your friends. So that's in Finnish. And now it's a big problem because it's uh, three years after, nothing happened, it's still closed. So politics have a huge responsibility not to invest, to make this change, you know? <coughs> so what we did with the mayor, we make a project, but we make a project with the people, which is not easy. So we do a map of, I'll show you some pictures. We make an evaluation of the damage. So the red is showing this very difficult, the yellow. So the difference of scales mean some buildings are still good, others are not good. And we make this. So we analyze the place, we find some key points on the, on the village. <coughs> and we start with the school, with the SOS school, to make meeting with the people. It's the first meeting in the bar. So there was 10 people. Right? Because people say, well, why I need to go to talk with these people? Okay, we did the first time. Second time, there was 30 people. It was not on the bar, it was in another shop. Then, one month later, it was uh, 50 people, because then everybody talked. You know? So, in the end, the last meeting was 500 people. Take four months to do that, but the problem for people is they cannot believe anymore that something going to happen. So, meeting, discussing, and we're working with beautiful people. There's an amazing woman called Ascolto Attivo. She did. She do this work. How to dealing with people? An architect cannot dealing with people explaining project because people don't understand. You, know, you need people to know how to dealing, to discuss, to help the discussion. So we did that on the street, and then we call people around, and then we this lady asked to this group of fifty people to write a letter, you no, know, in another time, like. Write me a letter in 15 time, 50 years ago, 50 years later, and you back to Camerino and you what you thinking was happening in these 15 years. No? And people are writing, 
no, amazing letter about what will be the futures and how they think it can be changed. So what was a therapy because everybody know then you cannot rebuild a city in one year. Only political people say, oh, in one year we can rebuild. No? Like the bridge in, in, in Genoa. No? These guys, I was fighting with him in an interview. After they collapsed the bridge you know, in Genoa, in seven months we rebuilt everything. I said, oh, how you can do that? You don't know how to do in seven months. Seven months you cannot do anything. So August, August, they start to demolish 10 months and it's not finished maybe take another two years so I'm, I'm going quick in this so we do a project with them and make a, some analysis about what the key points and also back from the experience of L'Aquila which is another bad story 10 years is not yet finished you need a plan because you cannot renovating buildings like uh, like this, one here, one here, because you renovate one, but the others are not renovated, you cannot get in. So you need a plan. So we, what we make, we make a plan to see maybe we start from the edge, we start to make, and people start to come back home slowly, slowly, and maybe there are some key points where you can open again, making security some, um, some road, some street, because like they have a beautiful theater, as now you can they do like a dialectic uh, theater, no, and people go every weekend, you know, they have a museum with beautiful things, church, you know, with Italians, we I mean here is not too different, but in Italy you can find Caravaggio in a church, you don't need to pay a ticket, you know, you go to see the Caravaggio, or in this case is a church with Tiepolo. You go there in, you look in the Apollo and go back get your coffee. You know? These things are everyday life. You know? If you cut that, people come crazy because they cannot do again the simple things, also the art relationship. You know? Anyway, so we make one little bit sketch about demolish an existing buildings and make a piazza. It's one one of the projects dealing with them. You know? So, and uh, maybe it's too long. Nobody's sleeping, so it's a good sign. So I keep you another few minutes. So we did this uh, project for um, in Rome for a campus. Maybe they are too ambitious because they say we want a plan to make this campus for the next 30, 40 years. They say, look, so make a plan for 30 years is, is a little bit too much. But so this is Rome. Suburbia arrive in a green area. They receive existing the hospital and two small buildings for education. So they want to extend this education field. We make two main axes. One is the green axe. One is existing already. <coughs> Try to find what the key point in education because all about uh, is a medicine and psychology and a specialization um, university for different fields on medicine. So maybe there are focus, also residential, sports, so it's a real campus. You know? And the results, this is uh, like a structure. I was a little bit utopia. You know? is maybe we can use an one element, so we repeat, and we're creating this sort of, of, of uh, grill. So the campus is under this line and there's all these little buildings, but and of course is a, you do a campus, you can think in about how you can make your campus more efficient in terms of how you use the energy, the waters, how you're using showers. So this is the axe, and I'll go as nine, 20, 45, I say, look, I think it's gonna happen many things in the next 20 years, maybe, maybe we start with the first part. So this is uh, coming from, uh, there was in 1962 a competition in Dublin where Giancarlo De Carlo made this campus like a city, you know, it's a beautiful project and uh, very utopo utopian but it's very beautiful. So we thought maybe the reputation of the structure is like a cells grow, you know, around one key point which is a square. Okay, I'm going to the point. 
I don't want to bore you. So that's the point. So maybe these food structures is creating a different kind of space, portico as a conference, and uh, and uh, that's conference around the gardens. Or oh, this is the office block. It's a little bit more important. It's bigger, so you can pass through. So all, everything is always open, no? So maybe uh, this is the residential area. <coughs> And it was a little bit crazy, but I thought maybe if you simplify things, maybe the, the most important thing is the sim simplify things, make these structures, is to repeat the way is organized the structure, make the complexity, not the single elements. You know? And you can design many, many different quality space. You know? oh, sorry. And the last one, you know, Italy is a, is a country full of paradox. No, because it's beautiful, but in the same time it's a chaos and it's, so it's very difficult. But there's still very nice people. <laughs> still a lot of nice people. And uh, in education, Italy is a, a very well known for some innovation. Now, this guy, is uh, Malaguzzi, is the guy who has invented the Reggio Children. Reggio Children is a model of kindergarten which is now everywhere in the world. The Japanese, Japan, America, North Europe. You know? And the other one, and it's built in, after the Second War because he was living in the countryside of Bologna and he creating an institution of kindergarten that wasn't exist before to help the family working on the field to take the kids and introduce in the education. So it was more for the social and politics aspect. The model, Reggio Children, today is an office who is promoting not only the education, but also the building, how to design a building for kids. And the other one, Montessori, which I'm sure you know, and now is a crazy guy, <coughs> he's a start in Bologna, who is 97 years, huh? 97, he's a guy with a big company and he created another model for education between educating kids until the before university using art and science so he's trying to shift another way so there are people in time in Italy try to invent the way to make education so we do a lot of projects for and this is the last one we just just won that competition to make a school <coughs> which is a primary school and secondary school in a, in the suburbia of Bologna. It's like a big big roof under the roof is a school. So it's a campus already with the sports facility and the buildings of the school existing are terrible, building like a industrial building, so now they demolish and we build a big roof. Uh, which is um, also because it's combining a pool, a sport facility and the school, maybe we can make this what we call green neighborhood. So how we can make these things working together in different time of the day. You know? That's the entrance on the school. One side is a primary and the other one is a secondary school. And that's the roof. So just to finish this, I will go very quickly, but I think it's interesting. Uh, this is Archipelago Italia, is the, the Biennale. I did the Italian Pavilion last year. And I did, um, instead to talk about the cities, because we talk too much about cities in Italy, it doesn't exist a big city. You know, the biggest one is Rome. Milan is three million people, so there's no metropolis. No, there's no, that's not a metropolis, this is a city. But Italy is about many small cities. The story of the relation between city and territory is the thousand cities. You know? And the cities in Italy, there was a state. So they're fighting each other for centuries, between 30 kilometers. So they're creating a lot of strong small cities. If I look now what will be the future of this, it's a problem of many problems, but we talk about the green city, Italy is already a green city. It's many villages, they all villages have an economy, they have a culture, they are very close. It's only 20, 30 minutes. That's the, that's the range of, if you take a metro, maybe in Vienna, 30 minutes is a lot, but in London, if you take a metro for 20 minutes, you maybe make three stops. 
If you take 30 minutes, maybe four. An hour, you're still in the Great London. So, what the concept of the city? Is it time or is it space? Because if it's time, in 30 minutes from Bologna, you make a circle, it's a Florence, it's a Modena, it's a Reggio Emilia, it's very close to Padua, so that is a city, you know? It's connected already. So we made this itinerary from many, make all the round of Italy, but finally something beautiful things. This is Giancarlo de Carlo, 1994. We are in Liguria, behind Savona. Huh? This is village, is the first uh, digital village, 1994. Uh, it doesn't look, eh? but there was a story of a developer. He bought this village, it was abandoned for 300 years because they changed the route, uh, road, and this, you know, no more connection, and it was abandoned. So, he, by old village, they put in a high speed connection. 1994, so it's uh, super innovating things. And Giancarlo de Carlo make the, the renovation of this village. But the interesting of this, he studied these rooms on inside of the building and he find a code. So there's a relationship between the dimension of the space and the dimension of the window. And this code is a repeat in all the in all the rooms and all the buildings. So, discovering that code, he make new windows related to this code. So, it's difficult to know if they're new or not because he's working on this idea. No? I think it was uh, quite amazing. No? And the building, it, of course, the building is old, but you can see that the contemporary intervention, very gentle, it's not, it's not fighting against, it's very gentle. The small element, the doors, uh, also the, the, the way, and the people, there are 75 apartments. Huh? People living there from Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, Chinese, North Europe, Americans. So the people live in this community because they are connected from 1994. So that means it's, an, it's an a possibility. Maybe technology, this invisible technology, can be helped to regenerate in this place. Because you live in a beautiful place. So we met this guy from London. And you can see in the video, he said, why I want to live my life to dream to live in another place? And London, it's a smoky, chaos things. And he went there with, with his wife and play guitar. So maybe he's retiring now. And they say it's a very strong community. But the way the village is made, you know, this is small, square, this is small, you can always go across to others, you know, so you, you must get life together. So, and the bars is the only one bar, is from a guy from South America. So this is the north, is uh, behind Cortina in uh, 1970 and the 60, Enrico Mattei, which is one of the biggest industrial, public industrial. Uh, personality is running any the biggest company of oil and gas. You know? It was competing with a big um, ESO and other big company. And he built this colony for the people who's working in his company. It's thousand, thousand people. The colon the colony was designed by this uh, guy from Friuli, Gellner, as another crazy guy. He designed everything. You, you really want to do a trip to do something beautiful and go to see that building. This is the main colony building. Huh? It's designed by somebody who's a new architect very well. This is facade can be from Frank Lloyd Wright and inside is a full edit. He designed every single thing. Also the plug to push the light was designed by him, every single thing. And because it's a colony for kids, huh? that's the space inside. It's concrete, but it is, you know, we're all against the concrete. But this concrete is a beautiful made. And Carlos Scarpa also working in the church, so amazing. And because it's for kids, and also interesting, the kids, they select kids by chance. So the kids from top manager and from the last person working in the company was a mix together, which is, I think, was a great idea to put in together a family. There are no stairs. There's only ramp to go to the sleeping room. 
because of course kids run everywhere. If you make a step, they're going to kill their legs. You know, because they, so they're not the only ramp going in the landscape. And because it was an area <coughs> with old stones, he planting all the trees. So what you can see outside the windows is something that he thinks is oh, it's an amazing place. You must go to visit that. <coughs> and this is another story. You know, Italy is a beautiful country. And the only problem is the, the Italians. But part of that is... Uh, and uh, <coughs> this is uh, Foreste Casentinesi. is on the edge between Emilia Romagna and, and Tuscany on the east side. This is a forest. <coughs> That forest on the 11th century, a group of, of monks, they decide to live there in the top of these mountains called Camaldolesi. So they live in their place for a thousand years and they take care about the forest. So one forest there is 550 years old, so at the same time a Michelangelo, which is of course super protected. But the Camaldolesi monks, they writing on the f 15th century a document about the sustainability of a forest. How you can manage the forest by keeping as a value, because you, you can have economy, but also you need to protect. So that's the writing 600 years ago. How to do it, how to dealing with the forest and keeping that forest alive. So we bring that because in Italy is a big discussion about wood, because we have a lot of wood, a lot of forest, but we import 80% of the wood from Austria, of course, from you, from Slovenia, from Croatia. So also the the, the pizzeria oven, no, the wood which is you know no value, but only for pizza is imported because we decide we not touch any more the forest. So it's a big debate. You know? So we say, well, I tell you a story, but 600 years ago, somebody tell you can do it, but you need to do it with some ideas. You know? Anyway, it's a beautiful place, Ipioppi. Then we went south. This is Camerino. <laughs> You know, was, well, I'm sorry to tell you too many stories, but when the earthquake came, you know, the first thing the, the Arcivescovo, Archiship, I don't know what they call it in English, he went to take the arts from the church, take away immediately and bring down on the fundament, foundation of the city because he doesn't want that maybe somebody else take it in another museum, you know, maybe in a corner or other cities. No, he keep and he was really physically do it, don't take it. Bring it in this place which is not the perfect place to make arts. But because they think this is the value of our cities. So he take care about all the piece of arts and uh, that's inside of a rocks is a church. Or this this is a Valadier. In a, in a grotto, you know, in a cave, he designed this. We are in the end of 18th century, and this is inspired by Bramante, of course, in Rome. But you must go to see that. It's in the middle of nowhere is this piece of architecture. So we try also to explain to architects and for people who come to visit the Biennale, then it's, it's not only Architecture is also this, it's also people take care about arts. So this is a castle in Campa in Campania. <laughs> this is a close to Matera, the Valle del Basento is a beautiful place. And we talk about the transportation and you know, anyway too long to explain. This is the Gravina di Puglia, which is close to Matera. You see there's a plane on top there. Yeah? This is a line, and this is a canyon. No? In this canyon, they build Matera. Is a little bit. Was they excavate in the rocks. They make the buildings. And I don't know if you never been. Matera is an amazing place, but it's coming from this. And then Sicily is another. <laughs> Sicily is. A, I'm from Palermo, so I'm born. I know very well the area. So this is the Creto di Burri which I invite you to spend some time to go there. This is the biggest land art things made in the planet. 
is no more, it not exist. This is a, villa, a, a village, Gibellina, in 1964, the earthquake disintegrating this village. Uh, it was all stones and things. So the mayor at that time decided to build a, c a new city 25 kilometers on south. And with the, they demolish everything, I mean the stones like this. They call Buri, this artist which actually was from that area. And may, you can see there are road and plot which are representing the, the remain of a city. And this is a is a landscape is huge. You go and now when you go with the car in a moment you see it's the only concrete that looks very soft, you know, because it's really follow the the curve of the of the hills. You know? It's very beautiful. And then he called architects to make the new city. There was the time in ninety end of sixty, beginning seventy then we believe to creating the nouvelle city, you know, the, the, this, the new city, you know, is a dream for many politicians and architects. You know? And he calls, of course, they call architects. Uh, they make some mistake, but it was good because nobody now have the power and the vision to make that. He calls some German architects to design this village. The problem is the anthropological. You know? People who was living in this village, they was very poor, living on the agriculture, which is very poor agriculture, no? only wheat. No? There no bathroom, no? no bathroom. The bathroom is maybe in somewhere, and the so they make a building with duplex. No? Duplex, they, nobody saw what the duplex is, and they put a bathroom with a with the bath. No? Nobody in that village you saw a bathroom, no? So what happened? They put hurt on the bath because they thought it was a vase, because it was easy, it was big, it was water, and plant uh, vegetable and tomato. No? You see, the distance between this was the fa fail the system, you know, because academia bringing models was not related to the people. But also he called artists to say, we want make a new city with architects and artists. So these artists, these Menotti, make this st structure. And then, sorry, he called one of the major artists at that time, Pietro Consagra, which he was already very well known all around the world. And this guy is uh, designed this theater. He said, no, no rationalist. We call, he ate architects make it things like this, so you make all this, and inside also it's all like this. The problem is that they never finish after 50 years. This is the biggest uh, art piece that you can live inside, you know, because it's a theater. It was closed, so what we, what we did, we opened this theater, <coughs> creating this system of security and open to the people and then never people went inside, you know. We opened to show you this and, well, they make some mistake also, but the, but the space was amazing and artists was talking with people and making sketches and writing something because people that don't understand why it's closed, you know. This is the artist and he make talk with people and still after 50 years, people remember the day when they escape from home and take the kids outside the house and he designed this moment. It's still very strong in the memory of the people. And then Sardinia is another country, this is another state, no? Sardinia, we are in Orgosolo, which is the north, eh? in Barbagia. Eh? Barbagia is mean Barbaro, no? because it was a very, very difficult place. Very difficult. Well, maybe you remember 1980, they kidnap people, and they cut the ears and they bring it in the forest and never gonna find it, you know? So it's hard people. But uh, Orgosolo is a village, but there was fro Roman people called that Barbaja because at the time the Romans was very hard people, you know? The Romans, they never been there, you know? And this is Orgosolo, it's a village, you know, 
I was there in April, it was snowing. So, so it was super cold, the people running sheep and, uh, you know, very little economy. But it's a group of people. We went to the bar, we stayed one day in a bar because it was too cold and tried to get friendly and it would take it all for one half day to understand each other. Then the lady was at the bar said, well, who did that? You know, who did this uh, element? This uh, fresco? No? So, we did. So they have a community group. They painting this all together. You know? And I say, well, how you decide the team? You know, this is uh, Guernica, and then it's all about environment, all about social, because it was a very famous uh, communist area, very strong. So they really invest in this social impact of the... And I ask you, how you decide to put in things there? And I say, well, we go around and the building tell us what to do. I found that beautiful. And every year they go around to repaint it. So it's amazing. But only to go to visit this village is amazing. And then, just to finish, is. Uh, we find this little project. Eh? We siamo a Dorgali, I don't know if you know this, but anyway, in the center of Sardinia. These young architects designed this little bus stop. Eh? It's, uh, the, the, they make the road, you can walk. The village is down there. But these things, you know, it's very simple. It's a wood with a glass, with four, which is a four chair, which is fixed on the ground, and this, the bus is only two times a day, in the morning and the evening, so it's not really busy, you know? But because there's no place for people, now this is a place where people take chair from home. You know? They sit in six or seven there and discuss because there is a window. It's, a, it's like a painting, you no? Know? It's just a... So as an architect made this, as a young guy, you know, the people there, they only stay there for talking, not for waiting a bus. No? They're talking and they're watching this beautiful landscape. So I think I, I called this guy, I met him, and uh, we went there to make a film. I think that's, I like these architects. He's able to make a, something simple, but so important for the community. It's very simple. It's full of small detail. No? It's the wood, the way it's carving, and these little windows. And then also was a message to to the young architects because in Biennale is mainly is a young architects or student to say, look, before you're thinking to be a superstar, eh, maybe you can be. Look at these guys; they do a very simple but very strong, very empathic, and they using the tools of creativity to make something that help the community to working on these things. No? So this was eight books. Very big, with the eighth itinerary, and there was the exhibition of every table is was a five project on this area. One is in the forest, one is in Sardinia, was in, uh, in Jubilino, and we tell the people the story of this project. And the message was, maybe good architecture can relaunch the territory if you do a good project. A good school, maybe a good civic center, maybe the community can stay together. No? And that's the power for no, architecture. So I ask you a few minutes for this video, which I think is showing the... Yeah. And this is finished. So we say the outer space, no city, no suburbia, was that is 60% of the territory. 
this. This is sort of tell you this. This guy is amazing. L'altro spazio non è città metropolitana, non è più periferia, è quello spazio immenso che rappresenta il 60% del paese che sono le aree interne. Il tema della mobilità è uno dei grandi temi di queste aree interne. Abbiamo bisogno di, di capire come funziona una rete, anche a bassa velocità, anche di tipo automobilistico, che permetta di raggiungere questi luoghi attraverso dei meccanismi che si stanno affacciando nel mondo. Sì, da buongiorno. Fabio Renzi, ti ricorda? Come no? Ho preso il progetto Mario Cucinella. Oh, buongiorno. Sì, è un viaggio che, che vuole lanciare un messaggio ma che vuole anche raccontare un modello italiano quello della prossimità è l'idea che noi qui non abbiamo le città metropolitane come hanno in altri paesi del mondo perché la prossimità di tante città costruisce di fatto una rete di esatto. città sì, una volta anche combattenti tra di loro eh, eh, una volta messo Questi faggeti che hanno 500 anni, 550 anni, sono alberi che hanno vissuto ai tempi di Michelangelo. Discute di sostenibilità e di bellezza, poi la bellezza ci sfugge perché le città purtroppo non hanno percorso quella strada. Allora quando vai in questi luoghi dove questo rapporto con la campagna, con, con la foresta, dove c'è meno conflitto no, sul per costruito, ti trovi una certa pace per dire ma forse quella cosa che abbiamo fatto per mille anni era anche una ricerca di un equilibrio. Quando la modernità si è piombata addosso con il bastone, questo spirito collettivo abbiamo pensato di trasformare queste due debolezze in un'occasione per fare qualcosa di nuovo. E questo qualcosa di nuovo è stato il tentativo della impresa sociale Carone. Le Alpi sono anche qui, sono territori difficili, molto sensibili al clima, molto sensibili all'ambiente e chi abita in montagna ha una particolare cura dell'ambiente. quella potenza e quella che ha creato anche questo rispetto profondo della montagna, quella cultura che è una cultura millenaria, si è poi trasformata nell'attenzione da parte anche degli architetti che hanno un rapporto così rispettoso alla natura e non è un caso che è così forte proprio in quei luoghi della montagna. Ne caro da parte del mio professore, io sono stato un pessimo allievo, il suo lavoro intellettuale era fuori dal tempo, cioè il tempo scorreva e lui era in un altro tempo e dopo tanti anni si parla di partecipazione, si parla di un rapporto del territorio, cioè quei temi che lui aveva impostato, sembra che siano gli elementi fondativi del nuovo mestiere. Sono levato pecore e mucche, avevo le capo ma adesso le ho vendute. Qui non ci sono molte pretese di vivere la vita non so come, qui si vive in compagnia, si fanno molti spuntini, quindi io qui sto bene, voglio ma... morire qui. Quindi un punto d'appoggio era il gol, non c'erano gli hotel, c'erano le case, amici, si ospitava le persone. E per i giovani non offre niente. Qui da quel punto di vista siamo ancora come prima. Quelle due ciminiere sono in qualche modo il segno di un grande fallimento, che però su quel territorio sono una ferita, perché sono come due aghi piantati su questa pianura. Sono una 
attivi sono stati verificati eh, però alla fine se ne fa un pochissimo lo scarso uso per la prima volta qualcuno ascolta anche questo grande dibattito tutti parlano, tutti parlano, nessuno ascolta aver fatto degli incontri in cui le persone sono state messe di fronte a una politica di ascolto è stato anche molto emozionante per loro ma, quindi, ma perché questo lo deve fare un architetto? Guardate che fate il pastore adesso <ride> Un lavoro come questo che è stato sicuramente dal punto di vista politico e anche immaginario molto forte, no? di affrontare una città nuova, di chiamare architetti, di utilizzare l'arte come un fenomeno in qualche modo fondativo di una nuova città, è stata un'operazione penso unica. Oggi, dopo 50 anni di periferia, ci, ci poniamo la questione di come mettere in ordine questo problema quando abbiamo una lezione straordinaria che ci ha spiegato per mille anni come si fa lo spazio. Thank you. I'm Viva l'Italia. I'm sorry for all the colleagues missed this lecture. Yeah, okay. Well, we do another one if you want any time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the guy from the village was talking with the cow. This guy, he told me the story, he, from when he was a child, he wanted to do that work, bringing cows. Uh, and he called his 150 cows, uh, that's particularly in that region, and he talked, you know, the voice. I was there with him. Uh, he started to talk, the name and things, and they, they all stop. Uh, then the chief of this, there are four or five, there are the chief, cow, they turn to him and he'd say, you, with this world, uh, impossible to explain, and then he's finished, the cow is turning back and they start to go, and he said, oh, now they go to Matera, 30 kilometers, they know what to do. I said, how you can talk with them? <laughs> I said, that is the story of the relation between peoples and environment, animals, as uh, beautiful, beautiful people, you know. Sorry, I keep you too long. <laughs> I like to talk, so maybe you know that. <laughs> I, I, this film is 50 minutes, it's only 7 minutes. So if you find it on the internet, in YouTube, yes. if you want to look, the film is... There's many other stories, but in here it's too, maybe too much, 50 minutes. But, uh, but you can find it, it's very interesting. Good, it's time for Good. dinner. Time for dinner, uh, or for drink, or maybe a drink, a drink, a drink. So I will be in Vienna for many years in the next, so maybe we can see you again, and uh, I told you another story. Yes. yes, yes, I'm doing drawings, yes. I'm, I'm not using computers because I'm not able, but uh, I have my sketchbook, and uh, actually the Vienna project, i was on holiday, which is the best moment of working. You know? So the people from my office said, you go on holiday and send us ideas, because if you stay in the office, it's too messy, too... And I did a little sketch you know, in a piece of paper in my holiday house. And I, I'm can able to do things when you're out of the tension and things. The time is always small time to dedicate into creativity, you know. This work is coming crazy because you need to do many things and when you have little space between others, you can make a design. That's, um, unfortunately, that's the way we work, you know. But I, I'm doing sketches, yes, and do, I follow all the projects. So it's 
we are now orga organized to do it, but I'm I'm still the idea that I need to follow every project, so which is make me exhausted, of course, but happy. <laughs> and your holiday house is in to Puglia. get the audience an impression. I think it's a, it's a, a truly structure. Truly, yeah. yes. It's in Puglia on the. In the coast of Puglia, also between Bari and Brindisi, is a very small area, it's a triangle between uh, Martina, Franca, Ceglie, Cisternino, it's a small area, it's a 5,000 truly. You know, this trullo is, is a square with a cone. No? Like your project. Yeah, like my like project. Like a lot of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, then many, many years ago, I did, uh, 20 years ago, I did a little project on South, but when I was a student, I always look in the Trulli as a, you know, a dream to buy, you know. But Trulli, in the, in the, it was a, for, for the people who's living in the countryside, Trulli is mean, it's mean a terrible time, because they living in agriculture, poverty, there's a little food. So, and so they selling their stuff as, you know, want to live in a modern house, you know. So I bought that many years ago, just because I thought it was good. And um, the doors are that size. You know? All the doors are like this. My next, uh, like I say, neighborhood, the next one, it was only 200 meters, no? He came, he said, oh, you know, I born in this house. I said, oh, wow, no, it was a big family. Eh? He was like this. <laughs> And that's why doors are so, for me, it's like this, but because they get a very bad time, you know, for food uh, and uh, living in a house only with a fireplace. All the house, half of the house was dark by the smoke, so you can't imagine living that. So it's, uh, so people, you know, there was a, yeah, another big mistake, you know, they built social housing outside this village, you know. For many people, it was a, uh, uh, was a dream of oh, the eating system, never get an eating system, running water, there's no running water. Still today, in my house, there's no running water. You have a tank on the ground and you need to use it. And there's a toilet, and the toilet is warm. In, my, in the house, when they bought house, there was no toilet. Toilet was something in the middle of the field, so when it's rainy, you need to go. So it's no fire, it's no nice, it's no, no nice at all. The problem is the terrible buildings. You no, know, 50 years later, it's like a monster. You no know, concrete walls and windows. It is terrible. It's changed completely the landscape of many areas. But you must understand what at that time, you know, for people who was living in poverty cold and uh, no bathroom, no running water, get in a building, which is, uh, you know, a stairs, you can have an apartment with uh, old tiles and things. So th that that story is uh, important to know because we criticize, you know, that buildings, but we must understand what, why they did that at that time, you know. Now is a problem because you know, the building poverty is now coming up after 50 years of building us no, it's less and less good, and so the uh, renovating will be a huge, huge problem. So I bought that truly, and it was full of animals living in the truly because there was no nobody was living there for 25 years. And slowly, slowly, we make the bathroom, we make uh, cleaning things. So it's like a, I'm good there sometime. Not enough, not enough. Well, you're welcome to come to visit. It's super good wine, very cheap. <laughs> And people eating very well, super good vegetables, so you can really get a good time. I think I need a drink. Yes? yes? Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. And thank you.